Hi friends, it's Amy from Mother Goose Librarian. I'm here today with a huge, huge pile of picture books that are all Caldecott medal winning books or Caldecott honor winning books. And I thought that this might end up being broken down into two videos because they are sincerely large piles of picture books and it would take too long to go through them and to kind of wrap up and review what they're about. So um, this will be part one, I suppose. Uh, the first book I have in no particular order, no particular year order of winning the medal, just a big pile of books that I've been reading for Picture Book Month in November and the challenge that I'm challenging myself to read all the Caldecott honors and Caldecott winning books that have been happening since the very first year, which I think is 1929, but I, I could be wrong. I honestly can't remember. I'm getting confused between Caldecott and Newberry, so I'm not sure about that. Um, oh, and then I have one other bonus book, which actually I'll start with that one. And this one is called Calm, uh, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and it's like a meditation for young readers. And it's so sweet, and I, I just find it to be um, very calming end pages. And again, my cat, the part Siamese cat, is making an appearance and making himself well known in this video. Um, he does have a beginning, I believe, of cat Alzheimer's, so he often meows just to meow um, because he certainly gets a lot of attention. <laughs> so anyways, getting back to this very um, Hungry Caterpillar, the calm book, it, it's just very relaxing and, and peaceful to read, and I highly recommend it for children to learn to be a little bit more mindful and to do um, a beginning sort of meditation. And it's a great picture book for that. And it's just called Calm, The Very Hungry Caterpillar Calm. Um, now on to the Caldecotts. The first one I have is My Friend Rabbit by Eric Rothman. And this one is um, very short and very sweet, kind of funny picture book about Rabbit and his friend Mouse. and how they have an air, a little airplane that they're flying and a dilemma that they come across when they're flying their airplane um, as it, as you can see here, ends up in the tree and how Rabbit has an idea of what he's going to do to get that airplane out of the tree. And I'll give you just a little sneak peek here. But again, that's called My Friend Rabbit, and that's about mouse and rabbit and how they um, solve their dilemma of their airplane in the tree. The next one is um, Steve Jenkins, and you might be familiar with him, and he's just fabulous nonfiction writer. And this is called What Do You Do With a Tail Like This? And great um, jacket. Jacket is the same as the um, case cover. But Steve Jenkins is an awesome illustrator. And in this book, we um, are introduced to different animals and what they do with different body parts, what they're known for. For example, um, the elephant. What does the elephant do with a nose like that? There's different noses. Um, and of course we find out, oops, I when that was actually the page where you find out that he can give himself a bath with his trunk or his nose. Um, what do you do with a tail like this? And we learn some other facts about different animals. We learn about the skunk. When the skunk lifts his tail, you're going to need to, you know, um, make way because he's going to, that's a sign that he's going to release his smell. Um, what does a particular animals do with the eyes like this. So it goes through different animals, different body parts of the animals and what they're known for doing something unique uh, out there in the animal kingdom. So Steve Jenkins has some great artwork that he uses to, to pair with the nonfiction. So it's kind of cool. Um, I'll, another one of, here's another one of my favorites. It's called Kitten's First Full Moon and it's by Kevin Henkes. And it's what a night is what it says on the back cover of the jacket and the case cover is different showing 
kitten's first full moon and what he experiences during that full moon. Um, in this story, very short and sweet, of course. Um, oh, end pages. I'll remove some sticky notes I have in here from when I was teaching. Um, we're seeing the different moon phase of the full moon. But in this book, Kitten sees the full moon and he thinks that it is a wonderful bowl of milk just waiting for him. And this is all about Kitten's pursuit to try to reach that full moon or to reach that bowl of milk so that he can have a drink. But we go through and find out what happens to him as he tries to reach that full moon and obtain that delicious milk that he so desires. But you'll have to read to find out what happens to Kitten in Kitten's First Full Moon. Again, by Kevin Hankus. And in this one, I didn't mention this, but the artwork is very um, stunning with its simple black and white and gray illustrations. Just a beautiful story and beautiful artwork. Another one of my favorite authors and illustrators who I just found out is living in upstate New York and that's where I live. He's a local author for me. And this is um, Sim, Sims Tabak's Joseph Had a Little Overcoat. And you might recognize the illustrations of Sims Tabak because he has also illustrated a version of There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Fly. And I believe the jacket is this, well, it's slightly different. There are some hints to what happens in the story. If you look at the front cover, you can see the cutouts. He's famous for cutting out um, die cuts in his illustrations. And you can see a little hint about what's to come in this story. And this is actually um, based on a Jewish um, story or song. In the back, you get to see the song. Um, I think it was a Yiddish song about having an overcoat. And Joseph, in his story, starts off, Joseph had a little overcoat. And most pages have a cutout where you see what happens when his overcoat gets a little worn. It gets cut down. Joseph cuts it down and makes it into a little jacket. And from there we go on where he breaks his, uh, cuts his coat down until he's left with nothing. So you'll have to read to find out about Joseph's little Joseph's overcoat and its journey to nothing. And the illustrations are great again with the cutouts. Um, the next story that I have for you is called Smoky Night. And this is written by Eve Bunting and David Diaz is the illustrator. In this story, we find out that there are um, there's looting going on in the street down below this mother and son's apartment and how they're watching um, what's happening on the streets below while the streets and the stores are being looted. Um, and the boy, of course, is very worried, but his mother says it'll be okay. There's nothing that they want, the looters want from them in, in their apartment on the second floor. And as they go to sleep one night, the boy is told by his mother, you know, I'm here, for, I'm here, we'll relax, it's okay, everything will be fine. But he's woken up to his mother alarming him as to the fact that they need to get out because there is smoke in their building and there is the building is on fire. And the little boy is concerned when they leave and go to a shelter that, a shelter for the night, that his cat, he's worried about his cat. Well, I will not tell you the ending. Of course, it is a happy ending and things do work out, but I won't tell you what happens as they are at the shelter and wondering about the cat and their apartment. Um, the next book is called When Sophie Gets Ang Angry, Really, Really Angry. And this particular story is written by Molly Bang and illustrated by Molly Bang. And Sophie is the little girl in this story who becomes angry over a toy that her and her sibling are playing with because 
she is told she needs to, basically she needs to share. So we find out what happens to Sophie when she gets very, very angry and how she, um, this, what she goes through and how she deals with her anger. And um, it's, it's a great story as far as dealing with emotions, especially anger and how people deal with anger in different ways. And um, it's a great one to share with kids learning to work through their feelings. So again, this is called When Sophie Gets Angry, Really, Really Angry by Molly Bang. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go to Starry Messenger. And this is a Caldecott honor, as you can see. And this is all about Galileo. And if you take a look here, beautiful end pages. There is just a, a stark plain cover. But if you notice, it's the night sky or what nighttime can look like. And this is all about Galileo's life and what he went through and his discoveries and how he was um, tried by the Pope in the church because of his beliefs and because of what he was learning and, you know, learning by looking through telescopes about the night sky, about the sun and about the earth. Um, and in this book, you find out his life story. And also, which um, there was a couple things I learned that I wasn't familiar with about Galileo. Um, a book that he wrote and published was called Starry Messenger, and um, where we get to learn about his, his findings in scientific developments. Starry Messenger, a picture book biography. And I think they are just wonderful to read, to learn about history, to learn about science, to learn about our world and people in our world. And I think that picture book biographies are wonderful books to share with students of all ages, as well as adults. I shared that book with my husband and he was actually very intrigued and impressed. And um, I have a picture of him reading the book, which I just had to take, my book loving self had to take a picture of him um, reading the book. Uh, next is When I Was Young in the Mountains, and this is a Caldecott honor also. And this is all about um, a young girl growing up in the mountains and how she's happy with her life in the mountains. It's the only thing that she does know right now, different things that happen to them when they live in the mountains and different things that go on in their life and the life living in, up in the mountains and uh, of the Appalachian Mountains. And um, at, at one point, she says that she has no desire to go to the beach or the ocean or see um, different parts of the world because she's perfectly content in the mountains. There's one um, illustration that I wanted to share with you that I thought was particularly interesting that I think kids will really like. Um, and of course, I'm not finding it right here. I should have marked it, but um, there it is. When she was young in the mountains, sometimes they come across snakes and how at one point she had her photograph taken with her family with a snake on her back and over their shoulders and of course the snake was no longer alive oh and this book was written by um C cynthia Roland when i was young in the mountains and i think i'll talk about one more today actually I think I'll save Make Way for Ducklings because it's by Robert McCloskey and he has a few different books that he has um, won honors and Caldecott awards for. And I'll talk about his illustrations in the next video. Um, let's see. Oh, here's, a, here's another one. Red Sings from Treetops. And this is um, written by Joyce Sidman. And this is a poetry um, and the, uh, collection. And this is like a picture. It reads as if it is a picture book. It goes through the different seasons and how the seasons reflect the colors in nature. And um, it's all written in verse. So this book could be read as a poem um, about each season and the colors that the seasons portray. Um, or it could also be read as a picture book going through the different seasons of the year. Red Sings from Treetops. And Let's see, I think we'll do one more for today. Owl Moon by Jane Yolen. 
You might be familiar with Owl Moon, and this has won a Caldecott. And this is all about a child and their father going out into the night, a winter evening, to go out and do some owling or look for owls and how the child must be quiet as they search for owls in the snow in the woods, the snowy woods. Just some beautiful, beautiful artwork. Um, and this book is illustrated by John Schoner. Sh Schoner? Sh I'm not sure how to say his name. And the child and the father, the father is calling for owls, making owl sounds. And I will give it away. Spoiler alert, they do see an owl and they are able to find owls in their owling adventure. And there is the full moon as they search for owls in Owl Moon by Jane Yolen. So I will be back to share with you more picture books as I went through this pile of picture books, which I can't quite reach. But here's a pile of more picture books that I will be going through as I've been reading these wonderful Caldecott winning, medal winning books. So I hope you have a great day, happy reading, and I'm wondering today, which book is on your heart? Please like my videos if you are interested in liking them and please follow me so that you can get more picture book content and more poetry content and more Mother Goose rhymes. So have a great day and happy reading.